So currently on my workbench, I have two Rico 500s. Uh, I have the all silver here, which is nice. Already kind of working on that shutter. And then I have the Rico 500 in black as well. Um, both of them rather nice. It's a very interesting how it works is this is actually your film advance. It's also the film door. So it's cool how that works out. And then you just pull that and that advances your film. So I was actually hoping that these cameras would be identical so that when I repaired one, it'd be very easy to repair the other. And of course, they are not the same at all. These shutters are quite different. So that's nice. Hello everybody and welcome back. Thank you for checking out another video. Today we're going to be talking about Norway on film. I'm going to be showing you why is that camera shutting off again. Thank you for checking in and watching another video. Today we're going to be going over Norway on film and the Pentax Spotmatic system that I took with me on that trip. But before we get started, make sure you check out my previous video on the giveaway. Still working on that. Still want to get that shirt order in and get those prizes out to winners. Uh, so I still need some more participation in order to make that happen. So be sure to check out that video and make sure you go onto the website, order yourself one of those t-shirts, and also check out the new cameras, lenses, things like that, that I have recently put up there as well. So again, go check that on the website. I'll link it down below. And now let's move on to the Spotmatic and Norway on film. So this is the trip I took just before the pandemic started. I did a video on this recently on the five reasons you should travel to Lofoten. I'll put that up here somewhere, so definitely check that out. Highly recommend Lofoten and highly recommend Norway. Norway, by far one of my favorite places to visit. Uh, definitely put it on the top of your list and check it out. So we started by flying into Lofoten uh, through Bergen, we went that route, and then went up to uh, just off the coast of Lofoten. We stayed there for a night. Uh, there's a little town there right on the coast. Uh, I can't remember what, what's the name of that little town. A, a little town of Boda, I believe. Boda, Norway is just there on the coast before Lofoten. A great little place, a nice stopover before you head to Lofoten. We took the ferry from there over. You can fly, uh, but I think it's a bit more expensive. Uh, and it, of course, you have to take the time to plan that out in addition to with, you know, getting to the airport, all that kind of stuff and dealing with that. You can also take the train from Bergen all the way up the coast to Boda and then ferry over as well. But I think that's like 24 hours is the train ride up there, which could be really cool, but I didn't really have time for that, nor did we want to spend the full day on that with the limited time that we had. Now I know I talked about recently how the Pentax Spotmatic is kind of my go-to for travel, photo, video type things because of the lens system it is built around. Uh, the Pentax Spotmatic is a very simple, basic camera, built very well. It's similar in some ways to the Nikon F or the Minolta SRTs, things like that. Canon F1s-ish, Canon EFs, uh, but honestly, I don't think the build quality is quite as good. Personally, most of these Spotmatics that I've come across have had issues with the shutter or the advanced lever. Now that could just be my luck. It could just be the person who owned them took care of them very poorly, things like that. But that is something I kind of have to take into consideration with my rating on this camera because I've had just about every experience I've had has been one of those issues with this. This, however, uh, is not mine. Of course, this is my friend Chris's, so it is very well taken care of. Uh, he's did a complete CLA on it, and it's just really smooth, really nice, no issues. Uh, just feels good. Sounds really good, too. And so if you come across one that is in great shape, it's probably going to take care of itself, uh, and it just it will last you a long time, I think. But that is something to consider if you're looking through thrift stores or just browsing eBay and you're not quite sure what the seller is saying about it, definitely something to take into consideration, as with all cameras. So I'm really happy with how these shots came out with Norway, and it just makes me like the Takumar lenses in that system all the more. Now as far as the camera goes, before we get into the lenses, it's very simple, it's very basic. If we were going to go on my normal, typical reviews, I would have to say build quality wise, it's a 4, just because I've had those issues many times with the shutter and the advanced lever, can't quite give it a five. As far as usability, again, I'm gonna have to go with a four. It's very easy to get up and running. There's no bells, whistles, anything. It's very straightforward. You have your shutter speed, aperture on the lens. Uh, you do have an exposure check. Other than that, 
not a whole lot. ISO goes up to 1600. Shutter speed goes up to 1000. There is a bulb mode and it goes down to one second. Uh, you do have your frame counter right there. Advanced lever is all metal, no plastic on that. And it's actually got a nice shape to it. Uh, very kind of ergonomic, I guess you could say. There is no exposure compensation. There is no hot shoe. This is actually just a cold shoe uh, that you actually have to buy separate, if I'm not mistaken. It's kind of difficult to get on and off, but there it is. Um, it almost looks naked right there. But yeah, so no hot shoe. There is a flash port over here that you can connect your flash to, but no dedicated hot shoe on the top of this. Gosh, that's annoying. Moving right along, other than that, that is pretty much it when it comes to the body. Now, as far as image quality and settings, uh, settings, I'm gonna have to go with the two. There really is no settings on this. Like I said, I mean, you do have a threaded shutter so that you can do put a release cable into that. So that's nice if you're doing travel and you wanna shoot long exposures, things like that. Other than that, I mean, yeah, you have a timer, you have the flash sync port there, uh, you have an exposure check, but that is it for the camera. So settings two, but settings and usability aren't really the reasons that I have this camera. The reasons that I go with this is because of the image quality and the lens system it's built around and just the versatility you have with that M42 now. So for lenses, here we go. Let's set this aside. <clears throat> go to the one that is just fantastic is the 50 millimeter 1.4 lens. This is the Super Takumar, of course. Now size wise, it's not ultra compact. Now that I've gone back and kind of compared this with my other lens system, I realize the size difference isn't huge in a lot of comparisons, uh, but it is still something to take noteworthy. And then of course, again, the image quality, uh, especially for video as well as photo, which is why I tend to go with this system, is just great. So again, that's the 51.4. Now we can put that next to the Canon 50 millimeter 1.8, which is very common lens, rather good quality, uh, but it is a 1.8, not a 1.4. So size-wise, they're going to be not very different. I mean, about the same height, about the same width, not a whole lot of difference there. I will say I do like the feel and the look of the Takamar lens, as well as it's a 1.4, keep that in mind. So of course, adding those extra f-stops usually makes the lens bigger. Uh, so the fact that it's a 1.4 and still the same size as the 1.8 is something to take note of. Now, if we compare it to the Canon 50mm 1.2, which is what I have right here, then it really starts to show. So you have 50mm 1.4, you have the 50mm 1.2, and then the Takumar lens in the middle is the 50mm 1.4. So it just jumped quite substantially there uh, really quickly. So I kind of like where that sits in that middle ground as the 1.4 and not the 1.8, and then of course it just has that compact size whereas the 51.2 just gets big pretty quick. So if we switch over to something a little different, here is the 35 mil, and then here is a Canon 35 mil. Now granted, this is a 2.5, and this is a 3.5, but nonetheless, you can see the size difference there. Uh, it just changes, it's almost double the size. And granted, this is an older lens, I will say that as well, I think it's the only 35 millimeter I have around here. So, so this is the 85 millimeter 1.9. Size-wise, it is not a whole lot smaller. Actually, I think it might be bigger than the Nikon 85 F2. This is the 1.9, this is the F2. Now, you can see size-wise, they're about identical. The glass on the Takamura is seems a lot bigger than the Nikon F2. Even though it is a 1.9 and the Nikon is an F2, uh, it still seems like the glass is substantially larger. So of course it is gonna be bigger than the Nikon F, but not by a whole lot like we've seen in the other comparisons. And then lastly, you have the 135. Here's the Takamar. This is a 3.5 135mm, and this is the Nikon 135 3.5 as well. And now here, you can see size-wise, not a huge difference again. Like I said, the Nikon is going to be slightly larger, but not vastly. Uh, and then the Takamar is going to be a little bit thinner than the Nikon lens as well. So the size difference isn't quite as substantial as I previously thought uh, across the board. Yeah, you do get some different sizes when it comes to different f-stops. So it is a little bit more compact, just not as drastically uh, as some would hope. But the fact that I can use those lenses for video and they're going to be fantastic and give me some great quality shots, 
uh, is an added bonus. For image quality, you have to go with a 5 just based off of the lens mount alone on this camera. It's the M42 mount. So with this, you could mount your Helios glass, you could mount your Voigtlander, you could mount your Leica glass, contacts, anything that's got the M42 mount, you can put on this camera, which makes this a much more desirable option, in my opinion, because it is so cheap. You can get a Spotmatic body, I want to say from 20 to 40 bucks for the body and then you can put whatever m42 glass you want on it and unlike with digital where you have to worry about sensors and megapixels and all that stuff when it comes to film the body is just a housing it all comes down to the lens that you put on it and then whatever film you're using for how the colors turn out or the image quality and things like that uh, but the lens is the main part of any image when it comes to film photography so if you just buy a cheap body that's going to last you a long time uh, and be very simple, straightforward, easy to use, then you can spend your money on the glass and put whatever you want on this system that is M42 mount. And that gives you a lot of options for some very quality results. So if you're looking for an inexpensive way into the M42 system, this is probably gonna be your best bet. Uh, there's a few other low-end ones I think that you get into. Of course, I think the Zenit, I believe the Zenit's M42 mount, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, but that build quality is complete garbage. Uh, the Zenits are just, the lenses are great. Even the lenses aren't built well, but the bodies are built even worse. They're fun. I have one. I've used it a couple times. It's a cool camera. It's fun to use, but build wise, it is just complete garbage. So after Norway, of course, we went through Finland. We did dog sledding. We stayed in an ice hotel and a glass igloo, things like that. It was great fun. We had a blast. Loved it up there. And then, of course, we were supposed to come back through and stay a few days in Bergen, but because of the whole pandemic thing that happened, we got rerouted. Those last few days of our trip were kind of canceled and we had to come back to the States through Amsterdam. Uh, so we didn't get to spend quite as long over there as I would have liked to, uh, but did enjoy it. Was able to get some great shots. We really enjoyed using this system for both photo and video. Uh, and the shots I got, I definitely think are well worth it. And hopefully you look at the pictures and you can see that this system is definitely one to consider uh, if you want to get into something that gives you a lot of options and a lot of versatility. So that is going to wrap it up on the Pentax Spotmatic, the Super Takumar lenses, and just Norway on film in general. Thank you for watching this. Comment down below, let me know what you think of the Takumar system. If you think it's kind of overplayed in, in the whole film, digital, video kind of realm, or if you think it is well worth that investment. Again, be sure to log onto my website, check out that t-shirt, make sure you pre-order that, uh, and all the new camera gear and stuff I have on there. Look through that and see if there's anything that interests you. Be sure to message me on Instagram if you have any questions. Uh, thanks for watching again, and I will see you in the next one.